Hi guys. Happy Thursday. Happy Autumn Equinox. Holy crap, I thought it was yesterday and it's today. So happy Autumn Equinox, everybody. <laughs> so, what are you guys doing for the Autumn Equinox? Anything? No, nothing. I'm not doing a thing. Nothing. Except for Mass Magic. So I thought it was probably time to start working on the Mass Magic. So, um, I'm actually, I have to actually go through and reread a lot of stuff. So, um, from this book, The Art of Ritual, awesome book, amazing book, does give you a section on just a tiny section on mass magic and how we embody the archetypal energy of the myth behind the mask. Um, and what we want to bring into ourselves and what kind of energies we want to merge with. So, these are our 10 guidelines. You don't have to do 10 guidelines, you can just use your intuition. So, okay, these are 10 guidelines for creating your own rituals. So, number one, remember the intention. So our intention is we are going to be bringing into ourselves, merging with an archetypal energy, a god, goddess, a spirit, any kind of energy out there that you want to. For me, it's going to be Lucifer. So I have my mask. I have quite a few um, ideas for the mask. So it's going to embody the uh, light um, and the real, true myth of Lucifer. So, just replace the Jesus with Lucifer, and there we go. One and the same. Simple. Very simple. So, two, let the myth inspire you. So, letting the myth inspire you. So for me, I chose Lucifer, obviously, because he was, you know, the best angel of whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then he decided that, okay, um, I don't want to follow, you know, your, your rules. And so his father was like, well, you're gone. You're, I'm going to kick you out of my game. So that, that's definitely a very close to home kind of thing with Lucifer, with the devil. We can relate. <coughs> we can all relate. I'm sure. Um, so whatever you guys pick um, for your myth. Um, the Pan myth, I love the Pan myth. Pan and Lucifer the myth are very closely linked. I have seen. I have I have seen that and I think it's amazing. amazing. They're incredible. So, um, I'm not going to do Pan this time though. Um, I already have too much of that masculine energy going on. Way too much of it. <coughs> so, number three. Use your intuition. So I'm going to let, for me, for the entire thing, I am, I'm going to go and I'm going to reread. Um, I'm going to freshen up my mind on uh, Lucifer, his immense history, all of it. Anything I can absorb into my subconscious mind so it can sprout. So, um, and I'm just going to let my intuition guide me with the mask. So it's going to be, um, I, I personally saw Lucifer within it when I was trying to get Pan, and it just didn't work did not work. So I feel like I can relate more with Lucifer than, well, I see them all as one being, one giant diamond with just many different faces. So another aspect of God, source, spirits, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I'm just going to put everything like, I'm gonna, I, I have a really cool idea of taking a uh, little like little squares of fabric and putting different herbs <coughs> inside of it to kind of represent Lucifer uh, and just different kinds of uh, it's going to be just a, an explosion a mask explosion of Lucifer's energy so that is definitely yeah I, the intuition number one is always intuition always 
So, <clears throat> number four, a ritual should benefit all and harm none. So we're not, you know, we never harm anybody anyway. So, this is kind of Wiccan-ish, ish, which I'm okay with, because we're not harming anybody within this ritual whatsoever. We're benefiting ourselves with the merging of energies with our own, with that of the archetypal energy. God, goddess, whatever you guys pick, spirit, source, angel guides, spirit guides, animals. You could even do animals. Take on the embodiment of an animal. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be really cool. I'm gonna be a dog, but me. Me in dog form. I would be a chihuahua like that. <laughs> so, alright. So it is gonna benefit all of us. All of us, because I want us all to learn from this. I want us all to experience something and grow uh, spiritually, uh, big time, and connect that energy and learn, and maybe even have a journal, a separate journal, um, with our mass magic, just to kind of get it, um, um, just to kind of keep notes, take notes, journaling, that kind of thing. So I think that you know, and the pro progress, progress, the progress that we make throughout the ritual. Uh, creating the mask, planning it, um, using our intuition, everything. So, I think it's going to be fun. Alright, so, uh, five, keep it simple. So, yes, I do believe in simplicity, big time, big time simplicity. Now, for my rituals, you guys all know how I do my rituals, I will uh, lay my compass, I will call in the energies, my ancestors, all beneficial energies that are willing to work with me. Um, negative energies are not allowed, so um, I don't call on the four cardinal directions, none of that. You all know how I do my rituals. So I will create the mask within uh, my sacred space, <coughs> right here. And I will prepare all the herbs and like little packets of herbs to kind of stick inside the mask, like maybe glue them. Stuff like that. Alright, so, yes, keep it simple. I like simplicity. Simple is good. But I feel like my mask is gonna be something like big. I want it to look amazing. Especially for loose work, so. It's gonna be really hard not to think of the not to think of Tom Ellis as Lucifer while making the mask. I don't want to uh, take on the embodiment of Tom Ellis. <laughs> so if I start talking in a British accent and my hair goes black, I've taken on his energy. Yeah. I would love to merge with him though. So okay. <laughs> Six, stay balanced. So, always want to stay balanced. Temperance, tarot card temperance. You always want to keep one foot um, in the physical, one foot in the spiritual. So, just keep it balanced up. Even uh, cakes, cakes and ale, uh, the red meal. So, when you're done, you want to ground and you want to. What am I talking about? Yeah, you want to ground and stay balanced. And so that way, everything is rooted still, anchored in the physical world, not just within uh, the spiritual or astral world, so, makes sense? <laughs> Alright, seven, keep in touch with your feelings and with the other people. So we already do that on a daily basis, and I think that is incredible. Um, all of us, we almost all of us keep in touch on a daily basis. So, like I said with the journal, maybe a separate journal for mass magic, the ritual, um, I actually have to go to the store, so I'm actually going to pick up a, just a blank journal, and that will be specifically for mask magic and our workings together. I think that, I think it'll, for me personally, it's going to show me my progression with the mass magic, and hopefully it'll help you guys too. So I think that's a very, a very good idea. I like this book. 
So, okay, number eight, honor the power of words. And what that is, is everything that you say within your sacred space, within your compass or your circle, whatever you do, has power. Words, are, words have power. So, so always just make sure you know you're honoring those words that you speak. You mean them. You have passion and energy behind them so that you don't, you know, just say something to say it and there's nothing behind it. No for reinforcement behind that to uh, give your ritual words or actions uh, power, energy. So, uh, number nine, keep the imagination alive. So, while doing the entire ritual with the mask and actually reenacting to a point of the myth or god or goddess, spirit, whatever you work with, whatever you are making your masks for. Now, you always want to make sure you keep your imagination alive. So you want to envision all of this going on while you're doing your mask magic. So get it going. If you have to play music, um, there are tons and tons of amazing um, hymns and songs. Yes, I said hymns to Lucifer. So those are a ton of things that I can play personally. Um, I have a lot of things that actually do remind me of Lucifer. So the imagination will keep going. Mine does not shut off. Ever. Ever. And it sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't suck. So. Alright. Number ten. Attend to detail. So. Attend to detail. What would that mean? Attend to detail. What do you guys think attend to detail means? Because I personally, I don't know. So we'll find out. Um, oh, attend to details. Every object and action in a ritual is there to help us under consciousness in a specific way that honors the intention of the ritual. If you intend to the details, attend to the details, the impact of the ritual would be, will be much greater as you will be bringing the quality of the sacred into particular aspects of the work. Rehearsals are a great benefit in helping you set the proper tone, regulating the timing of actions and reducing performance anxiety so that you, your attention during the ritual itself can focus on the ritual intention. Even in a full rehearsal, oh, if a full rehearsal is not possible, part participating, uh, your actions and what you will say will help. Everything you do in a ritual has symbolic meaning and impact, so attend to the details. So that is attending to the details, how we are going to attend to the details. So, does that make sense, guys? I like, I just really honestly randomly opened up to this chapter and it set uh, these guidelines and I just, I like them a lot. They work. They're very good. So, okay, one, no, um, remember the intention. Wait. Yes. Remember the intention. So, in both creation and performance, performance of a ritual, the intention is the guiding force. Without its presence, a ritual becomes a shell of what it can be. So, basically nothing. If at any point in the process, preparation, manifestation, or grounding, you find yourself worried, confused, or aggravated, you have lost touch with the intention. Focus your thoughts on the intention or take deep breaths to release the distractions and speak with the intention silently or aloud until you are back in sync with it. So that is just basically, you are losing touch with that archetypal energy, it is going away, you are focusing on different things, physical, mundane things. So you want to reenact and get that going for you. So two, let the myth inspire you. So um, you do not need to feel that you must formulate or enact a ritual merely on the strengths of your own personal mind desires and talents. A ritual admits you are s a ritual admits you s to sacred time and space into the archetypal realm of myth and mystery. You might choose to research, research myths and fairy tales with the same theme as the ritual you are planning or explore how other cultures have realized in in intentions similar to yours. So allow yourself to be touched by your own ancestral wisdom and the guidance of spirit. 
so I find that yes, very, very true, very good. So, all right, three, use your intuition. So sometimes the inspiration of a myth can give you so many ideas you don't know what to do with them. That is me. That is me. It gives me so much information that I don't know what to do. And I get lost, and I get confused, and I get aggravated, and pissy. So, um, where did I go, you guys? Oh, use your intuition. Three. Okay. Allow your inner sense of the intention and of what is appropriate to help you to contain and provide form for your ideas. Imagine what ritual can be like. And after thinking about what you can do, sit quietly holding in your mind the plans you have made. Allow yourself to become aware of how this ritual would feel when enacted. It is right. Is it right for your purpose? Do you understand the meaning of the elements you have chosen? Are they appropriate? Give equal time and intellectual and intuition in planning a ritual, and it will be balanced and powerful. So, that is for... Yes, letting your intuition guide you. I love it. So four, a ritual should benefit all and harm none. So obviously. Participation in a ritual allows entry to mythic dimensions, from which we increase both our consciousness and relatedness. So, oh, relatedness to ourselves, each other, and our world, and spirits. Any ritual that bears malice will reduce, if not destroy, the potential for healing that ritual holds. Malice affects only the person at whom it is aimed, but the person who generates it as well. So that's very simple, very self-explanatory. Keep it simple. Or a ritual should benefit all and harm none. So five, keep it simple. So it is easy to get carried away with the grandeur of myth and when formulating rituals. Remember, however, that simple rituals are easier for most people to follow and that focusing a few symbolic acts provides a better avenue for entry into mythic consciousness than does a ritual cluttered with symbols and stories. The ritual should be short enough to hold the attention of all present, so it meant all that is not necessarily needed. So, we'll be all doing this by ourselves, I think, unless some of us have other people to do that with us, I, myself. So I will have no distractions, it will be simple. Um, so I have to simplify the myth of Lucifer. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Okay, so six, stay balanced. So, as this says, um, balancing the actions and objects that represent the different aspects of yourself and the world is important throughout the various stages of creating rituals. Keep track of when you get off balance, worrying over details, getting washed over with intense feelings, letting pride interfere with the intention. Allow the balance you are creating in the ritual to remind you of the center in yourself and allow your inner balance to flow into the ritual. Following the rhythms of, the, of your breath and attending to the intention are two simple ways of returning to your center. So if you get thrown off, just remember the myth and what your intention for the ritual is. Quite simple. So, okay, seven. Keep in touch with your feelings and with the other people. So, this is the part that I really like. So, increasing relationship is an important function of ritual. I just lost my book. And so, throughout the process, attend to your feelings about yourself, the work, and the quality of connection among the participants. The more easily and smoothly feelings and ideas can be communicated during the preparation stage, the more you and the others will be open to the power and motion of the ritual in manifestation. Make sense? Yeah. Maybe? I hope. I hope it makes sense. So eight. Honor the power of words. So, okay, what is spoken dur during a ritual has m a much greater impact than if spoken in normal space and time. Because of this, choose what will be said and how it will be expressed with great care. While it is fine for some rituals to provide space for participants to speak from their hearts, for the most part, there should be little extra whatever extra spontaneous speaking select poems or write words that mean exactly what you wish to convey 
and practice delivering them for the best possible effect. Make sense? I hope. I hope that makes sense. So, nine, keep the imagination alive. So, okay, we enter myth through the vitality of imagination. The symbology of ritual should be means uh, to tap into the participants' unconscious. The simplicity of a ritual should allow their imaginations to create the consciousness of the myth that is being enacted. There is an easily recognizable vibrancy and regeneration that occurs when this consciousness is present. So that's a, that consciousness merging with our own, our own energy. Very cool. Very cool. So, all right, ten. Attend to details, which I already read to you guys. So, one more time. Ritual guidelines. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. You guys can just. You can omit anything that you want. You can do it how you want. This is how I'm going to do it. Just my way. So, one. Remember the intention. Two. Let the myth inspire you. Three. Use your intuition. Four, a ritual should benefit all. Five, keep it simple. Six, stay balanced. Seven, keep in touch with your feelings and with the other people. Eight, honor the power of words. Nine, the imagination, keep it alive. Ten, attend to the details. So, that is the ritual guideline. And if you guys still have not got this book, it is called The Art of Ritual. It is amazing. It gives you so much room for creativity for your own. So I can adapt this to traditional witchcraft and make it my own. Well, I can build it within a traditional witchcraft context. And this book is by Beck and Metric. Oh, Renee Beck and Sydney Barbara Metric. A guide to creating and performing your own ceremonies for growth and change. So yes, very, uh, very good book. Very cheap, actually. Eleven ninety-five, and it's not Llewellyn. Celestial Arts. <laughs> so that is my idea for that. My my idea is my idea is set. My intention is set. The mask is ready. I have been collecting things, different small gems. Um, I have been receiving visions from Lucifer on how the mask should be. I've been having a lot of crazy dreams. And just everything's going great. So, hopefully, we can all do this soon. What is today? The 22nd? The Autumn Equinox? So... This is the first of the fire festivals. So when should we plan this mass magic for? When do you guys want it? I'm thinking... Honestly... Honestly... Halloween. I really, really honestly think Halloween would be a really good time to incorporate mass magic into your... Samhain ritual. Um, even the night before on um, All Hallows Eve, can't talk. It, it's just that time, that time of the year where everything's very thin. <gasps> Everything is thinning down. The veal. So I just think it would be personally amazing. So, Chaz, you were right. October. It's been a while. It's been a while. I've been talking about this forever. So it's actually actually going to happen this time. So um, now that I have the book going, almost it's, it, it, I'm adding, I've added one, two, three, three more chapters. <laughs> I've added three more chapters to the book. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm going in, I'm picking one topic. I gave um, one snippet this morning. Um, I'm going in and I'm picking one topic, and then I am actually letting my grandma channel for me. Let her type for me. So, it's Veronica on what I gave you guys today. Heaven. That was her words. Her words on heaven. 
and I go and I look back at all those and I, I it's weird it's very strange to see the collaboration between the living and the dead um, I have actually written a whole entire book the help of the dead that's insane who, who does that that's seriously crazy it's very cool it's very very cool it's, it's helping me to overcome a lot more too with her uh, coping with her suicide uh, her death uh, it's making me realize a lot of things the importance of people of gratitude of kindness and compassion towards everybody so I don't know it, it's it's just it's letting me examine my own you know what I've went through and I, I, I never realized how far I came from where I was it's just incredible seriously it's incredible the synchronicities um, I don't know if you guys know um, Alan Kardec okay I did not know that this was a new movement it's the spiritist movement um, there are a spiritist network on YouTube that um, their lectures are about two hours long so what I do at night I sit here I get very comfortable and I have them in the background they're my white noise and then I have my grandma and I let her I just I, I hold my hands over my keyboard and I let her I let her completely come through um, sometimes I'll just type out what I hear or it'll, I'll speak it and then I'll type it um, and then two minutes later to five minutes later when I kind of become more conscious of what I'm doing what they're saying on the spiritist uh, network will relate to something that she has said so in heaven uh, the whole thing on heaven related exactly so I kind of think maybe that might have been a little bit of Alan Kardec chiming in with my grandma I don't know so yes everything out ashes so everything is going to be from the book on now is channeled all channeled information so if you guys have any questions for her that have not been answered through the Ouija uh, let me know if there's anything that you guys say uh, do you guys have any questions on uh, Oh, anything on about the afterlife um, anything that you have to ask her and then I could possibly take your suggestions write them down and you could possibly see them in the book and see what she has to say about them so if you guys do have questions about the afterlife about what happens from her her viewpoint not mine hers uh, comment below um, and I will definitely write it down and definitely take it into consideration of uh, putting it in the book because I'm still on that chapter of her solely her channeling her her message about such and such topic so it's it's, it's very fun and, and a strange process it's very different very very different so I've never experienced this before. I've never written a book. So it's very cool. Very cool. That she is... Yeah, she's participating. I just... I, I can't believe it still to this day. Never thought I would, Never thought in my life I would be, uh... I feel like I'm the co-writer. I feel like I'm being featured in her book. So I never thought that I would collaborate with a deceased relative. Which I think is amazing completely amazing it's shocking shocking very shocking so um as far as that shock pop shock shock pop art um somebody was asking yes it was code for porn some of it but then others were actual um people that just want to use my my image 
and I don't think I want people to use my image. I don't know. I'm torn. I'm. I don't know. I don't think I want people to use my image, unless I have the say so. Unless I I like what they you know if they take a picture of me and if I don't like it and they do and they put it in say I don't know their magazine or something and that would piss me off and I would probably get in a lot of trouble and have to get a lawyer <laughs> try to burn their house down so no that's just not gonna happen but yeah so it's it's yeah crazy very crazy. So, I, I, I don't know where that's going. I do not know where that's going. The Ouija pop art. It's incredible. Seriously incredible. It, it's, it's becoming... I, I, I have stuff going on up here. Lots of stuff. So. Alright guys. That, that, I hope that makes up for Witchy Wednesday. <laughs> I just had to tell you guys about the book yesterday. I'm so freaking excited and I'm trying to clean my mouth up and it's very hard it's very hard because I have a dirty mouth so alright guys um, I will see you all later I love you all very much I can't tell you how much I love you guys it's incredible you guys are seriously incredible so with that being said oh my love Oh, my love. And Gaga, if you're watching, Mercury is out of retrograde. Would you do with me, please? Please. We will weed it together. But alright, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, The Exorcist comes on tomorrow night. So yeah, if anybody watches it, I don't think I'm going to watch it. I think it's a bull bunch of bullshit. Let me know what you guys think. So, alright, guys. I will see you all tomorrow, and I love you guys. And I will probably watch The Exorcist, so damn it. Alright guys, I will see you all tomorrow. <laughs>